Oh, it's good to have a deacon again. Welcome back. Welcome back. Big steps. And little by little, just seeing new faces kind of coming back, it's really good. It's kind of a hope, a sign of hope that we're getting past this life-changing experience of the last two and a half weeks. Um, we celebrate St. Robert Bellarmine. He was a Jesuit in the 1500s. If you know your history, 1517 was Martin Luther's 95 Theses against the Roman authority in the Catholic Church. The whole idea of like, I just need scripture alone and no one to tell me what's right or wrong in the scriptures, just me and God. I don't need a church. And so Luther started the Lutheran community and then other churches, etc. kind of spun off from there. And in 1550s or so, Robert Bellarmine and other Jesuits kind of were the vanguard of the true faith, like answering the doubts, negating the, the confusion and, and trying to set a clear path of, no, this is the Orthodox faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, and here's why. It's just interesting for me that when you read St. Paul talking to Timothy, he's telling young Timothy, an, an early Christian convert, an early young Christian priest or even bishop, um, in the midst of the early church, there was already moments of confusion, already moments where clarity was needed. And so he says, like, whoever teaches something different and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the religious teachings we have received, whoever among you is teaching other things, avoid that. Sometimes people get into religion, like, they get something from it. I was surprised even recently there's kind of a sense that, you know, you want to help all the different churches with the su amazing supplies that we're getting, but don't help this church or that church because it doesn't go to the people. It goes to, it's like religion is sort of a gain for certain communities. And we know that the human heart can, can misuse religion as a, as a means for evil, but it's just interesting that that was there from the beginning. It's not something new that should scandalize us. Our Lord knew it was coming. The weeds and the wheat have always been there. And he talks about, St. Paul is telling Timothy about many of the things you can fall into. The conceitedness of religion, the love of money, the love of popularity, people looking up to you because you're such a holy person, whatever. And he says, but you, man of God, in Latin that phrase is homo dei, you, man of God, avoid all that. Don't get distracted, don't get sidetracked in your journey. You have one purpose. Stay focused. St. Paul to Timothy, early Christianity, the struggle to stay focused was real. Avoid all this. Instead, you pursue righteousness with devotion, faith, love, patience, generosity. Compete well for the faith. Lay hold of eternal life. Grab it. And don't let go. Which, to which you were called when you made that noble confession, confession, not, your, not the sacrament of confession, your, your public profession of what you believe in Jesus Christ, in the presence of so many witnesses. So at some point you see, you see Timothy must have, maybe finishing RCIA, becoming a Christian convert, stood up in the public midst, in the midst of everyone and professed his faith. And now St. Paul's reminding him, lay hold of that eternal life to which you were called when you made that profession, when you were baptized. As a reminder for all of us, what am I holding on to? Am I holding on to too many things? Am I trying to hold on to my, my wealth, my finances, the, the, the situation in, in, in around me? Am I trying to hold on to my public status? Or am I holding on to eternal life and those things that lead me to it? We do know that today we struggle to keep God first, to keep the sacraments high, a high priority in our life. We know that people around us are struggling. We know that we surround ourselves with people who don't have the same values and can lead us to diminish the value of God's things and those goods that lead us to eternal life and allow us to kind of let go. Oh, it's just heaven. I'll worry about that later. No, you, woman of God, man of God, grab hold of that eternal life and don't let go. May the Holy Spirit be kindled in our hearts, rekindled in our hearts with a burning love for God and the things of God. Anything but indifference to those things in this day and age. And make us witnesses to others that there's something supremely valuable in our midst through these gifts. Amen. Amen. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, pray for us.